Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here and welcome back to another Monster Hunter Cross video and another episode of the Weapon Workshop. In last week's episode, we took a look at the Dual Blades and if you missed that, then you can find a link to the complete Weapon Workshop playlist down below where you can find the eight weapons we've covered so far. But in today's episode, it's time to turn our attention to the Switch Axe. Once again, we're going to kick things off in Guild Style because this will be most familiar to those of you coming over from Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. The main difference, once again, being your ability to equip two hunting arts. However, before we dive in and take a look at the moves, for those of you that perhaps haven't used this weapon before, let me give you a brief intro. So the Switch Axe is a weapon of two halves. You have the Axe Mode and the Sword Mode. The Axe Mode has great reach, whilst the Sword Mode has great damage potential. At the top of the screen, you will notice this gauge. Any attacks in Sword Mode will cause this to deplete. Swapping back to Axe Mode will give this a chance to recharge, however if you let it hit zero, you will be forced to switch back, which leaves you in a rather lengthy, somewhat vulnerable state. So good use of this weapon will be a balance between Axe and Sword Mode, hence the name Switch Axe. Now let's take a look at the moves, starting in Axe Mode. With your weapon sheath, pressing forward and X will perform your draw attack, which is a horizontal sweat. Pressing forward and X with your weapon drawn will perform a forward lunge. Then pressing X will perform an overhead chop. Pressing X a second time will follow that first chop with a horizontal chop, and pressing X a third time will complete the combo with an upswing. It's also worth noting that this is an infinite combo, so you can loop this as long as you want. You can also link the X combo with the forward lunge in a couple of different ways. You can either go from the lunge into the triple X combo, or you can sub out the final hit in the X combo for the forward lunge. Now pressing A will perform a horizontal chop. Pressing X and A together will perform the same upswing found at the end of the X combo, and you can also perform that same upswing after a roll by pressing X. That is three ways to get to the exact same move, and there is actually a very good reason for that. See if you press A after an upswing, you will go into this chop combo. This is also an infinite combo, but it does use stamina. But provided you have stamina, you can keep this going. So if you pair this with say a dash juice or a mega dash juice, you can keep doing this indefinitely. And given that there are three ways to get to the upswing, that means there are three ways to get to this combo. X, 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 and then A. Alternatively, X and then A, A. Or finally, roll X and then A. Also, during the combo, if you press R at any time, you can perform a powerful finisher. And should you want to, you can even go straight back into your X combo after that. Now during your combos, and this also applies to Sword Mode 2 which we'll get to in a second, if you press B and either left or right, you can sidestep, which is great for repositioning yourself if you're trying to hit a particular spot on a monster. Now if you press R, you will switch into Sword Mode. Pressing R a second time will switch back into Axe Mode, and if your weapon is sheathed, pressing R, X and A together will draw straight into Sword Mode. As mentioned, all attacks whilst in this mode will deplete the bar at the top of the screen, so make sure you keep an eye on it at all times. Pressing X will perform an overhead chop and pressing X a second time will follow that chop with an upward slice. And again, this can be done infinitely provided you have gauge. You can also change the direction you're facing if you're spamming this combo simply by holding a direction whilst spamming the combo and you'll gradually turn on every slice. It can be handy if you need to move slightly or perhaps maybe the monster moves ever so slightly and you wanna again reposition. Also pressing forward and X will allow you to jump forward during the overhead chop, which again is good if you need to close the gap a little bit. And then pressing A will perform a horizontal swipe, and pressing A a second time will follow that first swipe with a double swipe. Again, this is an infinite combo provided you have gauge. And finally, the big one, pressing X and A together will perform the elemental discharge or the elemental burst. This is a long multi-hit move that ends in a massive explosion. In order to do this, after the X and A input, you need to keep spamming X, and eventually it will finish with the discharge. But doing so uses pretty much all your gauge and will return you to Axe Mode. However, if you're tight for time, you can actually go into the discharge earlier by pulling back and pressing X. And if the monster happens to move and you miss your opening and you don't want to waste your gauge, you can either stop spamming X to end before the explosion, or you can simply evade out of it. Now just before we take a look at the jump attacks, let's talk about a few quick ways to transform between Axe and Sword Mode, because you don't really want to be standing in the field pressing R for a conventional switch, it's slow and it will leave you open. Firstly, after your forward X lunge in Axe Mode, if you press R you can quickly switch into Sword Mode. After the first A attack in Sword Mode, you can press R for a quick switch back into Axe Mode, and you can even go into Sword Mode after the Chop Combo Finisher by pressing R at the end. Also, as a bonus note, if you wanted a quick way to go into the Elemental Discharge, you can press X and A after a double A swipe and go into it much quicker. This skips the initial pullback animation, so it speeds up the process a little bit. Now finally, let's talk about Jump Attacks. In Axe Mode, jumping off a ledge and pressing X will perform a Downward Chop. In Sword Mode, you similarly get a Downward Chop, and you can also jump off a ledge in sword mode and press X and A together for a quick elemental discharge. 
And finally, should you want to, you can jump off a ledge and press R to swap between modes. Now as a final note before we check out the other styles, switch axes come in different forms. They have files, and these different files affect your sword mode attacks. In short, you have power, element, dragon, poison, paralysis, and exhaust. And if you want to know more about those in detail, then that is always something I could cover in a future video. But for the time being, power seems to be the most popular one, given that you get an attack increase on all your sword attacks. So for more damage, it's a pretty safe choice. Now moving over to Striker Style, once again the initial draw for this style will always be your ability to equip 3 Hunting Arts, and the Switch Axe has 3 very powerful ones which we'll take a look at a little bit later. For the time being, while in Axe Mode, your base X combo is the same, as is your A combo. You still have the chop after the upswings, however there is no chop finisher. You can no longer press R after the chop combo to go into this powerful finisher, instead you can either continue the combo until you run out of stamina, or you can simply evade out of it. And as for sword mode, your X combo is the same again, however your A combo loses that nice fast double slash on the second A input and instead you have an overhead chop. And that also means you no longer have the snazzy elemental discharge shortcut either, so in that respect it's much more like Switch Axe when it was first introduced back in Monster Hunter Try. Now moving over to aerial style, once again you know the deal by now, this style only allows you to equip one hunting art, so choose wisely. In fact, when we talk about hunter arts I've actually got a recommendation for you, but we'll talk about that soon. To begin with, in Axe Mode, your Vertical Upswing can now morph into Sword Mode, and given that we have three methods to get to that, you now have three more paths to Sword Mode. That's X, 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 R, X and A, R, or Roll, or in this case Jump, X and then R. However, Forward X no longer performs the Lunge Attack whilst in Axe Mode, so that is gone. Switching over to Sword Mode, most of your moves are the same, and your Double Swipe on the second A input is back. However, the only bad thing is that you can no longer perform the Elemental Discharge or the Burst on the ground. Pressing X and A whilst grounded will do absolutely nothing. But we are in aerial style for a reason, right? It's all about getting airborne. With your weapon sheath, jumping off a monster and pressing X, will perform an axe swing. Jumping off a monster and pressing R, X and A together, again with your weapon sheath, will draw straight into sword mode. With your weapon drawn, in axe mode, jumping off a monster and pressing X does the same chop. Pressing R will morph into sword mode, and pressing X and A will perform an elemental discharge which starts when you land on the ground. And yes, that is an elemental discharge from axe mode. As for sword mode, simply jumping off a monster with no additional input will attack on the way up. Pressing X will then perform an additional sword swing which makes this great for mounting a monster thanks to the double hit. Pressing R will morph back into axe mode and again pressing X and A will perform that same elemental discharge when you land. Now turning our attention to Bushido style, again you can only use one hunting art and again you can morph into sword mode from all of your vertical axe upswings. So once again another three paths from sword mode which is really really handy. This style also loses the finisher after the axe chop combo but it's not completely gone and you'll find out why in a second. In sword mode your second X attack that was previously a vertical chop is now a horizontal swipe and you can no longer attack after an evade roll whilst in sword mode. But Bushido style is all about that evade. Rolling through a monster's attack will trigger the evade and from here you have options depending on the mode that you're in. With your weapon sheath, pressing X after an evade will perform the missing finisher from the end of the axe chop combo. And you can even follow this with another R input like in guild style for a quick switch into sword mode. Alternatively, still with your weapon sheath, pressing R, X and A together you'll perform two quick swings in sword mode and pressing R will then follow up with a vertical axe downswing or you can stay in sword mode for some more hits. With your weapon drawn in axe mode, again the evade does the same thing, pressing X will then do the missing chop combo finisher. And in sword mode again, pressing X whilst drawn will do the same double swipes with the follow up potential. Now, Switch Axe has access to three very powerful hunting arts, and these alone could well be the draw to make you consider Striker Style. The first one is Translash. This is a very long combo of both axe and sword chops that ends in an elemental discharge. And when I say it's long, I mean it. You do not want to be using this unless you have a guaranteed opening. It'll take quite a few seconds to finish, so this isn't a move you'll be using if you only have a quick opening. The next move is Demon Sword Mode. This enhances the power inside your sword mode, giving it even more attack power. And what's more, if you have this active when you perform a Translash, you'll get a slightly longer Translash combo, even though it's already ridiculously long, and it'll also have a different finisher. And finally, Energy Blade. This refills your file or your gauge no matter what mode you're in. The first level will fill about 80%, the second level fills 100% and gives you a 10% affinity boost, and the final level 3 version also fills the whole gauge and gives you a whopping 30% affinity boost. And if you're using Aerial or Bushido style, this is the art I would recommend. It charges ridiculously fast, to the point that you will likely never need to leave sword mode. 
By the time you run out of gauge, this art will be ready to use. You use it, you fill up your gauge, and you then repeat the cycle. And what's more, if you're using this with Guild or Striker style, then pair this with the Demon Sword mode for some insane damage output. So to wrap things up, let's talk about my favourite style. For me, it has to go to Aerial style, with Striker coming in at a close second. Aerial is ridiculously powerful, and the speed at which you can mount monsters rivals that of the Insect Lake. The attack on the way up, plus the attack on the way down, means you'll be mounting monsters more often than not, and doing so then just opens up the potential for even more damaging combos. That being said, Striker is also a style I really like. Having played with Switch Axe when it was first introduced in Monster Hunter Try It, the lost moves don't really bother me too much, and being able to play around with all three of those Hunter arts, even if Translash is ridiculously situational, is just too much fun. Either way, all four styles are great in their own way, and again, it's down to you to find out what works. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. If you have any questions, then by all means, let me know down below. And if you did enjoy the video, then a like would be super appreciated. As a super quick heads up, the next Weapon Workshop will be in two weeks' time because I'm away next week, and you will still have a Monster Hunter video on Wednesday, it just won't be a Weapon Workshop. That will return the week after. So from that, thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.